Hello everyone, welcome back to the Scroll Ensemble Classical Music Improvisation Channel. This video is part of a fascinating series inspired by Johann Joachim Kornz's Versuch, a method from 1752. An intro to this series and the other videos can be found through clicking here or in the link in the description below. Specifically relevant is the video about essential ornamentation, which just uh, is placed before this one. These essential ornaments can be used when improvising in the French style. In the Italian and most other styles, we can add even more free ornamentation. And in this video, I will talk about Quanza's basic approach to teaching this free ornamentation. There will be a tiny reference to other similar ideas before him. And finally, some general remarks about ornamentation from the same chapter, chapter 13. Quanz put together an interesting pedagogical system to teach how to ornament freely, even without knowledge of composition. And it is mostly this system that I'm using in my online Baroque ornamentation course. Find out more about my course through the link in the description below. It is open for all levels and all instruments and new dates appear regularly. As I already said, Quanz wants to help people without compositional knowledge specifically. Yet, even for people who do know composition or figured bass, it is interesting to dive into these ornaments to shape one's stylistic taste buds. The general approach is very simple. Quanz puts together the most common, simple melodic patterns with their most rudimentary bass. and shows you different ways of varying those melodic patterns. They are like little basic building blocks, which we love talking about on this channel, which you can find in most Baroque music and could use for your own compositions and freer improvisations as well. In my approach, I learn some of these ornaments by heart, so they roll out automatically when improvising. But Quant also mentions that these are only examples for the novice, and inspired by them, you can invent more by combining, varying, and elaborating. When you meet these building blocks in the wild, you will have to transpose what you have just learned. And this is something that takes time to learn, if you can't already do it, but I am convinced that everyone can learn and that it's an important ability. We see in many old methods for improvisation that it was seen as essential. Quantz has some tips for learning transposition. First, check what sharps and flats are in the key you need to do transpose to, and then find them on your instrument. Especially check whether you need a major or minor third, and the same goes for the sixth if relevant in that particular key. Look exactly at which intervals you find in the ornament that you're trying to transpose, that is from one note to the next, so that you can copy exactly that. But when you're doing that, make sure to take into account the key signature we just mentioned. Quantus examples always start on the same note as the original melody, and this is so both you and the listener can keep track of the original melody. However, you could choose to start with another note in the harmony, for variation, for example. And in this case, it's best to play the original melody note immediately after. If you don't know which notes are in the harmony, Quantus comes to your aid again. He often writes down the other harmony notes in treble clef in the table for each basic building block. This way you can memorize which surrounding notes you can use in your ornamentation. In my course, I use small practice pieces in which these building blocks are used all over the place. So you immediately have to practice using the ornaments in different keys, transpositions and places on your instrument. In the 16th and 17th centuries, we find relatively a lot of books where little basic bits of melody are printed with a list of possible variations. Some argue 
that this art of ornamentation is the best documented practice of all of historical improvisation. Look, for example, at Ganassi from 1535 or in the 17th century, the aptly named Selva forest of various ornaments by Rognoni. Here too, one would learn or be inspired by these ornaments and then be able to go out in the world and improvise. As far as I'm aware, we find this idea less often in the 18th century. A late remnant is Simpson's book on divisions. Neat does this for bass variations, especially, and Geminiani uses something in that vein, but, well, it's only a year before Quantz and it's not really the same. Quantz doesn't refer to any other books or historical inspirations. Did Quantz think he came up with the idea himself? Of course, we will never know, but it's interesting to think about. Another interesting link is with Partimento and the more modern schema theory. You can watch a video about my use of it here with further links to general explanations. Then Quantz continues with some remarks about adding this kind of ornamentation, which I think are also useful for us now. Careful with adding too much ornamentation all the time, because your ear will not be able to recognize the beauty of a melody with fewer or even without ornaments anymore. Quantz even says somewhere, a really beautiful melody should not be ornamented at all. Though I think in some ways the opposite is true for our time now. We're so used to music without ornamentation, to hearing beautiful melodies everywhere, that it sounds strange, wild and not tasteful to us to ornament. So let's train our ears a little bit to get used to a bit more ornamentation. At the same time, Quantz says, it takes quite some experience and insight to be able to improvise your ornamentation. In other words, when you get started, it won't sound great, but that's fine. You need time to develop the ability, learn a range of options, and finally improve your taste to sense what to add when in the moment. Ideally, variations should only be added after the listener has heard the plain melody. And I think this, this could also mean when the melody is very well known already. A singing phrase should become even more cantabile, thanks to your ornamentation. Passage work should sound even more brilliant. And I think we can extrapolate from this that anything you find in the composition that tickles your musical soul can be inspiration for your ornamentation to try to spotlight that idea even more or increase that element you liked so much. Wilder variations are not preferred, especially in modest or melancholy music. But you could use them, but you have to play them in a modest and melancholy way. When an idea is repeated, you must add something, but you could also omit something. This is also a variation. The suggested variations are intended for slow movement. However, many of them can also be used in faster movements, which Quantz leaves to your taste. And finally, we come to an example of an adagio with a lot of these ornaments in it. This, and slow movements in general, is the topic of our next three videos. If you want to make sure you automatically get to see them, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and to help us out, please consider sharing this video, adding a like, or supporting us on Patreon. Thanks and see you in the next videos.